How amazing to get a peek into the daily business affairs of another Romney heir, silver spooned and groomed to rape and pillage the environment at all of our expense. Indeed, this is a slimy and rather grimy tale. Upon catching wind of this story, Heather, we did a little investigating ourselves. We looked into the public records and portfolios of the father-son duo of Mitt and Josh Romney, and what we discovered wasn't much of a surprise. I'm sure no one will be dismayed to hear that this duo's business ventures are not generally leaving any green footprints behind, but instead are stamping carbon and chemical waste tracks throughout the USA and the whole world. From Russia's Gazprom to China's Snook, Mitt Romney stands there in hypocrisy. While talking tough on China, he's there all along, holding a healthy chunk of Snook stock right in his back pocket. This is China's third largest oil company, folks, which, by the way, just loves to do business with Iran. We conducted a search of Utah state and federal court records, and certainly it appears that these prominent Utah businessmen with no prior oil and gas operations experience have cowboyed their way into multiple oil-filled entanglements, barely three years into their corporate plunderings. Dating back to the late governor, George Romney, this family has cheered and vocally supported nearly every American war and confrontation, while not a single one of them has ever dared to enlist in our nation's armed forces. If they support these wars so much, then why not just strap on a uniform? I mean, I'm sure our soldier men and women in Afghanistan could really use another helping hand, don't you think? The reason that he didn't serve in Vietnam was because it was against the religion. That's what we. That's what I read. I'm no, that's sorry. not. That's not correct. Um, he he was on. He was serving his mission. Um, and you know, my five sons have also served missions. They've none um, served in the military. But All of you served your church, going on missions. Did you ever consider serving your country by putting on a uniform by serving in the military? You know, I think you, we can look at the guys who served in the military, uh, men and women, and just say that's the biggest sacrifice you can make for your country. It's just it's nothing any of us did, but we look at those guys with a tremendous amount of respect. And Ben, do you regret you never served? Do you? You know, I I I, uh, I look at my life that I'm living right now, and I um, I'm in residency, and I spend a lot of my time uh, at the VA hospital. I get to work with uh, vets who have uh, made great sacrifices for this country, and uh, and I look at their lives, and uh, hopefully I get to serve them a little bit too. This is important. Not all Mormon men made Mitt Romney's choice. Not all of them hid behind the special deferment that they were offered. Some Mormon men did their missionary service for their church and served in Vietnam. Brave Mormon men were killed in Vietnam, men Mitt Romney's age, while Mitt Romney was sitting out the war in France. Mitt Romney's father, George Romney, did not serve in the war of his era, World War II. You might have heard of that one. And George Romney's father never considered joining the American military because he spent much of his early life in Mexico. And now we have a man in Mitt whose buffoonery rings loud and clear as he staggers around, attempting to cover tracks regarding his true and previously expressed thoughts regarding our own nation's emergency response capabilities throughout his flip-floppery. Romney claims FEMA should go back to the states, or even better, to the elite, money-mongering, oil and gas-backed private sector. Uh, FEMA's about to run out of money, and there are some people who say do it on a case-by-case -case basis, and some people who say, you know, Maybe we're learning a lesson here that the states should take on more of this role. How do you deal with something like that? Absolutely. Every time you have an occasion to take something from the federal government and send it back to the states, that's the right direction. And if you can go even further and send it back to the private sector, that's even better. Instead of thinking in the federal budget, what we should cut, we should ask ourselves the opposite question. What should we keep? Oh yes, brilliant. Let's put our government crisis response program in the hands of these corner-cutting profiteers whose primary modus operandi and very duty seems to be pandering to their shareholders and bolstering their own bottom line. What a great idea. Would a President Romney actually get rid of FEMA like he said would be the right thing to do? Just let the states handle it? You take care of it on your own, New Jersey? There's no help for you? Is that what he means? You'd give it to business even if you could? Reporters who follow the Romney campaign tried to get the candidate to answer that question today many, many times. Thanks for your help
I don't know if it was 14. We actually counted up, as you saw there, it was 11 times, at least in that one instance. While Mitt and Josh abide by the Mormon word of wisdom, which prohibits them from partaking in so much as even a single cup of coffee, under the pretext of righteousness, they now turn around and install these noxious petroleum waste ponds, and then they invest in Chinese oil companies who are in bed with Iran. Oh, and let's not forget about the 1979 Mitt-sponsored Monsanto Grand Exit from their deadly tenure in the chemical industry during which time the corporation killed entire river ecosystems from their poisonous PCB dumps, along with concocting chemical cocktails like Agent Orange. Subsequently, enabled by Romney's own Bain Capital, they were empowered to make a leap into a Frankenstein-like Bain Child brand of bioengineering. And as of late, they've been achieving worldwide headlines, earning the accusation of the fostering of a global food supply domination scheme. All in all, it seems the Romney family is in cahoots with some rather dubious characters. From pit to pond, this whole operation stinks to high heaven of daddy's dirty money. For EnviroNews USA, this is Josh Cunnings. I'm a gremlin. I'm leaving the party. And I want everyone to stuff the ice chest. Thank you. <laughs>